Hi there guys, my name's Matt and today I'm going to talk to you about how to install your central heating uh, for your radiators, your, your hot water pipes and the cold water system in your house, your new build or garage conversion. I'm doing this in a garage conversion at the moment. Um, so I'm going to start off with uh, the cold water coming into the property. Um, so I've basically fed it in through the floor. This is a concrete slab. Uh, construction foundations um, and I've got another video on how to do that um, which is the link in the description I basically fed it off the existing house um, over on the other side of this window and it comes under the floor it comes up through the concrete slab and then I've got a elbow on there and I've basically sliced the V shape into my uh, into my floor this is a floating floor so I'm just basically putting chipboard on top of um, PIR insulation uh, if you've got a suspended floor, you would just basically cut through those um, those joists um, as little as possible. But feeding that pipe, so I basically fed that pipe across here around to my main water point where I want to put the stopcock and turn the water on and off. And I've got my stopcock here, so I've just put an elbow back on that pipe and then fed it into a stopcock. And then inside here, I've got a um, a liner for a 20, this is 25 millimeter blue pipe. And I've got a liner inside there because when you've got a compression fitting on an MDPE pipe, you can't let it crush. When you're tightening this compression fitting, if it crushes the pipe, you're not going to get a good seal. So the, I've, I've got links for all the products in the descriptions when I describe them. I'll just, I'll stop for a little bit and describe them. But uh, so that's basically got a copper olive. On the on the inside here and that's squeezing onto this MDP pipe and um, I've got a liner inside the MDP pipe to make sure that it stays solid when it's being crushed so this turns the the cold water the mains water on and off and then it comes up into copper pipe you don't need a liner inside copper pipes because it's quite rigid and then I'm, all of these I've got solder ring fittings um, because um, solder um, is, is a rigid fitting. If you use copper, if you use compression fittings on a central heating system, um, it they, they can end up um, the pipes do expand and contract. So the olive that's compressing onto the uh, copper pipe can eventually become loose. So um, and when I did the pressure test on this whole system, I did actually get some leaks from the compression fittings. So I decided to. Um, just basically get rid of them all and um, put solder fittings on um, and to do that uh, there are lots of videos that are way better than I'll be able to do um, on how to do soldering um, soldering pipes this is called a solder ring fitting because it's got a ring around it with the solder already inside um, and you can just get normal uh, ones without solder in them um, but I, I found this a lot easier I haven't had any problems with it so yeah, check out another. I'll, I'll put a link in the description for you so you can see a really good video that I found on YouTube on how to do the um, the actual soldering of the fittings. But it's it's pretty easy. Um, so I basically got my cold water coming in. I've got a stop cock here to turn it on and off. I've got a uh, a drain cock here, which is a compression fitting. Uh, that's the only one I could find nearby from Tool Station, and that's to drain the whole system once you fill it, fill it up or you want to do any maintenance work. You just undo that and it drains everything out of here into a bucket. This is going to be the kitchen area. So I basically put I'm putting the boiler on the wall there. So I've got a bathroom behind, and this is this is the the taps for the kitchen, and this, then there's taps for the bathroom and the shower, and then there's a toilet over there. And I'll show you that just now. Um, so starting with the uh, bathroom. So my cold water comes in here through the stopcock, then it goes right and it goes up to my cold water tap for the kitchen and then uh, so cold water is always on the right and warm water is always on the left so this is uh, on the right if you're facing the kitchen then it goes down along here and goes up to my boiler so that's the first thing I've got the, the mains water coming in and going to um, 
this is a slight odd one, so it's it's firstly going um, to the toilet. So it comes in, goes to the toilet, that's to fill the toilet up. And then on the left of it I've got all the other connections. So um, it goes along here, one to the shower, one to the bathroom tap, and one that goes all the way up to the, the boiler for the central heating system and the hot water system. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the cold water system. So just to recap, it comes in from the blue pipe, it goes along to the boiler and there are several connections along the way that split off and give cold water to taps and uh, to uh, the shower and to the toilet. And that's, that's uh, the toilet here. Which has gone underneath the floorboards. I cut a V shape into the into the floor, the PIR foam floor, and I've just fed it through underneath like that. And so that refills the toilet. And then I've got one on the right here, which is the uh, the shower, the cold water shower. So here's my pressure pressure testing jig. I'll show you how that works in a second. And then on the right here, I've got the cold water for my basin tap in the bathroom. Um, now I'll show you how the hot water works. So, so I've got the cold water coming in, goes up to the boiler, and then I've got the hot water coming out of the boiler and going to the bathroom tap. So there is a hot water on the left for the bathroom tap. Then I've got it coming along again, and it goes down here on a T-junction to the shower unit over there. So on the left, there is the hot water for the shower, and it continues along. And then I've got the hot water on the left here for the kitchen tap, and that's it. Uh, that's that's the whole hot water system because it's very it's a very small place here. Everything is. Uh, on this side here, so I've basically got taps on the front, taps on the back, and the shower unit there. So choose choose where you're going to put everything um, efficiently, and it makes it easier. Um, but obviously, if you want to have something um, elaborate and don't want to um, pay attention to where the positions of things are in the room, then by all means do it. it. Just makes it a little bit more complicated, but it's it's just as doable. So. Um, so yeah, that's that's the hot water and the cold water system. Um, and just to show you um, a few more things about uh, about what I've done, I've, I've basically got 22 millimeter pipe coming straight off a stopcock. So this is a 25 millimeter stopcock to a 22 millimeter uh, copper pipe, and then all of the things that come off those are 15 millimeter because that's uh, just what will fit onto the um, the tap fittings and the shower fittings. Um, so I just want to make sure that the flow is as good as possible until it gets to the fitting itself. Um, so 22 millimeter and 15 millimeter. Um, and I basically used T junctions to split off from the 22 to the 15 millimeter. Um, and just a tip for when you're doing the soldering fittings on a on these T junctions, these are the hardest bit. And once you crack those, it's really really easy. Um, you basically just heat it at the back here. That's the best thing to do. And once that's heated, the solder on the because because the copper is thicker on the uh, on the wider diameter diameter bits. Once those bits are melted, the uh, 15 mil fitting, um, the solder on the 15 mil fitting will already be. Um, it will already be hot enough to start melting so you don't need to worry about that one so much um, yeah and then just got elbows coming up to a corner 22mm elbows coming up to a corner and um, and I'm going to leave that to the plumber to fit the boiler because I'm not going to bother with that um, and now I'll talk to you about the central heating system it's actually really easy um, the reason I'm making this video is because there's quite a lot of um, googling that took it took me quite a lot of googling to actually get everything figured out and how to do it. So 
Um, if I was me and doing this again, I would love to see a video like this just to explain everything so I don't have to spend ages on Google trying to figure out how to do everything. So um, what I've got is a feed and a return on my pipes and basically it works like your heart in that you have arteries, a big artery that comes out and then you've got capillaries that go into each bit of your body and then on the way back you've got small veins and then large veins that come back into your heart again. So basically that's the easiest analogy I can think of. It comes through from the, down from the boiler. The feed is the feed that feeds the um, uh, the radiators and all of the feeds connections go on the left hand side of all radiators um, just to stay consistent throughout the room. So my feed comes down here on the left from the boiler, goes all the way to the floor, goes into this groove that I've cut out and then it tees off, it elbows off and I've basically made it go straight down the room in a straight line so that I can stick all of my connections onto that straight line. And I've got two radiators here, one, one on that side and one on the other side. So um, I'm splitting it off there onto a 15 millimeter pipe. And then here I've got a radiator that's gonna be in the shower room and I've just stuck them in the floor with 15 mil and then sticking them up. Um, and I'm going to do those later because basically I'm just making sure this is all ready so I can put the floor down. Um, so the first one that comes off is a T-junction 15mm feed pipe all the way along here to the left hand side of my radiator. And my radiator is going through the floor, up through the wall and out again because I want to have I want to have floating radiators. These are like vertical floating radiators. Uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, for the ones that I found on eBay. Uh, they look really good. The anthracite, anthracite grey, which matches the windows we have. We've got like a anthracite grey uh, window frame, aluminium. Really nice. Uh, they look good with cedar cladding on the outside, and I wanted to keep the same theme throughout. So that feed comes in over on the left of the radiator, and it goes up into the radiator. Blah 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 down into the return and then it goes the return goes into a separate pipe here this is the feed pipe that I just it just came down through and it goes back into a, into a return pipe that goes back up here and to the boiler on the right hand side and uh, the same happens to the other one so this is the uh, towel rack and the in the bathroom it goes down through the feed up there to the towel rack and back again um, back again through this one sorry to the return and goes back to the boiler so it's basically like veins and arteries and then it continues here's another one on the feed pipe on the left all the way along I've got a straight coupling a straight 22 millimeter coupling here just because the pipe is only three minute three meters long then it continues along here, splits off with the T-junction. This is an equal T because I'm sticking, I couldn't find the 22mm um, to 15mm reducer T's. So I've basically got an equal T and I've got a straight reducer from a 22mm to a, um, this is called a, this is just called a reducer coupling. It says 22mm to a 15mm. And then that goes to the left hand side of my bedroom radiator, here, goes into the radiator, comes back out, goes into the return, and into the other pipe, the main return pipe, like I said earlier, all the way back here again, to the right hand side of uh, those two pipes again, and the same again for the last radiator but I'm sure you understand it by now so um, that's pretty much it it's super easy much easier than I expected and now I'm laying all the floor down on top uh, and I'm ready to start um, putting the walls up and 
starting to put the radiators in, mounting those in, and I'll show you another video of that. So let me know what you think, and um, I might even do a video of the uh, boiler once it's installed, if you like to do it yourself. I can show you how it's all connected and what it all looks like afterwards. So keep checking out the videos, and thank you very much for watching. I'll join you in the discussion below, and uh, I'll put some links for any of the products that I found difficult to find in the uh, in the description. So thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye bye.